Hey everyone, this is Mr. A. I want to go through a couple of videos here with you on related rates. So this is another one of those classic Calculus 1 topics, and it's one that I actually find really fascinating. I think it's a lot of fun, and it kind of pulls together a few different things that we've talked about in Calculus. We get to draw pictures, we get to come up with equations, and use implicit differentiation. It's pretty cool. So I want to start off with what is probably the most classic problem. I think this is actually the very first problem I saw when I studied related rates as a high school student. And what we have is a ladder leaning up against a wall, and the ladder is going to be sliding down the wall. So I've actually got a little simulation of this here we can take a look at. Of course, here is our ladder, right? And this is going to represent the wall. This would be the ground. And the ladder is going to slide down the wall at a rate of 7 feet per second. The question is, how fast is the base of the ladder sliding away from the wall when the base of the ladder is 12 feet from the wall? Right? So when the base gets to 12 feet, that's the point that we're interested in, we want to know how fast is the top, uh, excuse me, is the base moving away from the wall? So a little bit of intuition here we can kind of apply to this problem and think, well, if the top is moving down at a fixed rate of 7 feet per second, you might initially think that the base is going to continue to move away at a fixed rate of 7 feet per second. And we can go ahead and run this animation a little bit and see what happens. Um, so you see as the ladder drops, the, the rate of change over here is not constant, right? It's much faster closer to the wall and much slower out here. So there's definitely something going on here, and that makes it an interesting question to think about. Uh, we're going to play around with a geometric understanding of how this rate is changing as well as an algebraic understanding. And there's also something pretty interesting happening at this end. So if you notice when the ladder gets very close to fully vertical, watch how fast that rate changes. It just snaps almost from you know 4, 3 out to the wall and back in the blink of an eye. So that's something we'll see bear out in the equation as we set it up, and then we'll understand that graphically a little bit later. Let's go ahead and stop that and get to the problem at hand. First thing we're going to want to do with any one of these problems is set up a picture so that we can understand the variables and what's going on. So we've got a wall, and on this wall is leaning a ladder. The ladder is 13 feet. Notice that's going to be the length of the ladder right there. And we have to define some variables. They're talking to us about the rate that the ladder goes down the wall. That's a rate of 7 feet per second. So we're going to need a variable for how high the ladder is. And they're also asking us about the rate when the base of the ladder is 12 feet from the wall, how fast it's sliding away. So that means we'll need a, ba a, a variable for how far the ladder is from the wall. So it doesn't really matter what you want to call these. Let's go ahead and call this distance x. That would be the distance the base of the ladder is from the wall. And I'll go ahead and call the other distance here h. That would be the height of the ladder on the wall, right? So this would be my h here, and this would be my x there. So let's decode this problem a little bit. The top of the ladder is sliding down the wall at a rate of 7 feet per second. That means that dh dt, which is to say the rate of change of the height of the ladder with respect to time, is, now since it's going down, that's a negative rate of 7 feet per second. In other words, the top of the ladder is moving downwards, negative 7 feet per second. That's the rate. What we're looking for, right, we want to find what is the, in our case, x dt, which is to say the rate of change of x when, right, so uh, let me erase that equal sign for a second, dx dt when x equals 12. That's what we're interested in finding in this problem, right? So the negative 7 feet per second we're given, we're trying to find what is the rate of change of x with respect to t at the moment that x equals 12. So looking at this picture, it should be pretty clear to you how these different rates, rates are related. This is a right triangle, of course, since we assume the wall to be vertical to the ground, and that tells us that x squared plus h squared equals 13 squared or 169. So this is the equation that controls this problem, right? Our rates are going to be related by what happens in this equation. But of course there are no rates here, this is simply an equation. So to get rates, we're going to need to take the derivative, right? So we get rates by taking the derivative. Now of course, what are we going to take the derivative with respect to? Well, since we have dh dt, and we're looking for dx dt, we're going to work in dt, that is to say with respect to time. So with respect to time, this is going to be all implicit differentiation here. We're going to treat x as a function of time, so its derivative would be 2x dx dt. We're also going to treat h as a function of a function of time, excuse me. We're also going to treat h as a function of time, so the derivative of h would be 2h dh dt. And with respect to time or not, 13 squared is 169, which is to say a constant and the derivative of a constant with respect to anything is going to be zero. So this is the equation governing this relationship. We're interested in dx dt, so we can go ahead and solve for it. A little bit of algebra here, dx dt is going to equal 
I'll bring this over to the other side of the equation, subtract it from both sides, negative 2h dh dt, and I'm going to have to divide by this 2x so that I could solve for dx dt. And there we go. Here is the rate of change in x with respect to time as a function of three variables. It's a function of the height of the ladder, it's a function of the position of the ladder from the wall, and it's a function of dh dt, which is say the rate of change that the ladder is, uh, the, the rate of change in the height of the ladder with respect to time. Now we know two of these three variables, right? So let's plug in here, negative 2h. Well, I don't actually know what h is, so I'll leave a space there for a minute. dh dt, well, that was given to us. It's negative 7 feet per second, so that's negative 7. I'll leave units off. We'll just put them back at the end. And then divided by 2x, well, we're interested in when x is 12, so 2x is going to be 24. Now how do we fill in this missing piece of information. We need to know what h is, but h is always changing. Well, remember, we're only interested in the moment when x is 12. In other words, when the ladder is 12 feet from the wall. So if you think about a quick Pythagorean triple over here, right, if the ladder is 13 and x is 12, you should know right away that that's going to be 5. It's a Pythagorean triple, 5, 12, 13. If you don't know, you can always just plug into Pythag and figure out that the height is 5. So now that we know what that height is, we can pop that right in there and work out our rate. That's uh, negative 2 times 5 times negative 7. 2 times 5 is 10 times negative 7. Uh, well, 2 times 5 is negative 10 times negative 7. That's negative 70, positive 70, over 24. And our units are going to be feet per second, just as h is in feet per second. We're going to still be working in feet per second. It's still feet because x is a linear measurement. This is one-dimensional. If it was area or volume, we'd be talking feet squared or cubed. But this is just going to stay feet per second. So the rate is 70 over 24 feet per second. This is how fast the base of the ladder is moving away from the wall at the moment when x is 12. Notice, by the way, 70 over 24, that's a good bit less than uh, 7 feet per second, right? I mean, 70 over 24 is a little bit less than 3, right? So just under 3, which is quite a bit slower than the top of the ladder is moving. So we were talking about that before and also noticing that at the other side, that as x gets you know small, as the height is really close to 13, we get a very, very fast rate. So let's go back and take a look at the, uh, the animation here and pull that back up. Right. So the answer to our question at 12 is that it's changing at a rate of, oh, let's see, move that over there, just, uh, just under 3 feet per second or 70 over 24 feet per second. But what's happening on that high end? Why so fast? Well, what's really happening is there's a circle that determines where this ladder is, right? The radius of the ladder, or excuse me, the length of the ladder doesn't change. That's the radius of the circle. And so as the top moves up, what you're looking at is the intersection of that circle with the x-axis. Now that's going to change very little over here, but as the circle flattens out and you get to the bottom, it's going to change drastically. So over here, a very small change in height results in a very drastic change in the x-coordinate on that circle, or at least the intersection of it with the x-axis. As we move out, that changes, and as we reach the end of the ladder, where you know the ladder is reaching the bottom of the ground, or the bottom of the wall, that change is pretty slight, right? A relatively large change in the height of the ladder results in a pretty small change in the length of the ladder from the wall. All right, so we see this nice relationship here to trigonometry, and that's the geometry behind what's going on here. So that's a pretty classic related rates problem, is the old ladder falling down a wall or sliding down a wall. If you enjoy this video, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions or there's something you'd like to see me do in particular, you can shoot me an email or comment through YouTube. Or, of course, if you're in my class, just ask me tomorrow. Have a great day.